The next pwn challenge is Rut Row Rail Row. This was a medium challenge with 6 to 1 solves written by Applet. It says, uh, my friend keeps writing super insecure C programs, but I'm too lazy to fix his code. I'm sure it'll be fine as long as I use enough exploit mitigations, right? We're given a netcat port, the C file, thank you, thank you, a Docker file, and the challenge binary. Uh, this is a fun challenge. Um, basically, the, the solution is we're going to do a printf leak, and then after a printf leak, we're going to do another printf, overwrite the return address on the stack such that it points to a magic byte within libc, or sorry, a one gadget, uh, and then we'll jump to that. So really not too hard of a challenge. Um, I thought this challenge was easier than the rickroll, um, so I'm guessing I did something on rickroll wrong. But anyways, let's take a look at the, the challenge. So first let's run a checksec on it. Um, it said there were extra protections, so row, 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 and we can see it is a full rel row binary. Uh, you can kind of guess that based off of the challenge name. So that means we can't overwrite the uh, global offset table, uh, which is usually commonly used in um, these printf challenges. Also, pi is enabled, so we, if we were to overwrite the global offset table, which we're not, but if we were, we would also have to leak the address of the main executable. Uh, Non-executable stack is on, uh, same as all the challenges, we're not writing shellcode. I haven't done a shellcode challenge in a long time now that I think about it, but NX is always enabled these days, and there is no canary, so we will be doing a buffer overflow and potentially some wrapping, um, but we'll see. So if we look at the source code, oops. Uh, row, 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 nice and simple program. It's gonna do some buffering, it's gonna do a puts. Uh, buffer of 512, it's gonna read from standard in, uh, so there's no overflow here. Then it's gonna do a printf on our buffer, so we have a printf vulnerability. It's gonna print out some stuff, then it's gonna read that buffer again and do another printf. Sweet. Um, so like I said, the, this challenge isn't terrible. Um, it's just, can you solve it or not? Uh, I think it's more just like an execution challenge. So the first thing we're gonna do for our first printf, we're just gonna do a bunch of uh, percent %p's. This will leak a bunch of stuff on the stack. We don't know where the address of anything is, so first we need to get addresses. Ideally, we'd like to get a address to a stack, a stack address, so that we can calculate where the location of RIP is on the stack for that stack frame. And we also need an address for libc, so that we can jump to a one gadget. Um, then for the second printf, we're going to use the percent %n uh, overwrite characters so that we can change the RIP. So there's a stack, then there's that RIP on the stack, and we want to set that to the libc plus, uh, was it a magic, no, one gadget, something like this. Um, I think uh, I couldn't get one gadget to work exactly, so what I ended up, I had to actually uh, do a couple of different things. I think I ended up doing stack RP plus eight is equal to zero, and then I did this was actually equal to a pop RDI, and then I did stack RIP plus 16 is equal to this. Anyways, this is the solution, and uh, let's start doing it. So here is the solve script. Um, Again, written in Pwn tools. Uh, you do need libc for this challenge. So if you don't have libc, uh, one way to grab it, uh, the libc for this one, uh, you can take this, and what you'll do is you'll do docker uh, interactive volume. We're going to mount the oops, current working directory to challenge tag this one. I think that should be it. Oh, docker run. Oops. Cool, so now we're in, so red pwn jails are a little bit weird, but it's gonna be using the libc from this file. Um, so then we can go to cd child, we can do ldd on uh, rut row, see which libc it's gonna load, and it's loading this one. And then from here we can do an lsla, because it's probably a symlink, and so this is where it's actually grabbing that libc. So you can then copy uh, lib x86 libc to your current working directory. And since we did that volume mount here when we started it, it this is like a two-way mounting. So everything that goes in this folder also goes to the current working directory outside of the Docker container. And so now we have ls libc right here, uh, which is useful. Um, and we need that for just calculating offsets of things. Um, Next, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the solve script. Uh, make, uh, this was a Debian system, I think. So another trick I highly recommend um, if you're new to these challenges is 
uh, try to keep it, try to run everything in a Docker container. Um, the challenges of running in a Docker container, and what's great about Docker containers is you can match the remote system. So I don't run things in pwn jails because uh, they're just it's really hard to do stuff. But I run everything in. If I find a SHA hash, I will specifically build a Docker container for the CTF uh, and always use that one. So I have one called Debian. I just set it up. It automatically loads a bunch of tools I have. Um, and so I use that for all of my challenges. And so that way I know for sure that I'm using the correct version of libc, the stack alignment's going to be the same, um, any ASLR configuration, stuff like that, uh, I won't be in for a surprise when I try to run it remotely. Um, cool. So here is the salt script. Uh, again, we're using pwn tools like every other challenge. Um, so we're going to load the elf binary, we're going to grab libc, uh, we're going to start the process, we're going to set up some contexting, uh, let's attach gdb. Um, like I said, first thing we want to do is leak a bunch of values, because we need a stack address and a libc address. And so uh, one way to do this is p, p interactive. Um, we are going to use this. What this will do is, this is just like a little printf generator. It's going to generate something that looks like one is equal to percent one dollar sign p, and then two is equal to percent uh, two dollar sign p, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and it continues. And so that way we can see what's on the stack and uh, figure out which values we want to grab for our info leaks. So if we run this, pmux python three solve. Um, this is what we sent. Uh, sorry, this is what we sent. So we sent zero is equal to zero, one is equal to one, and we're doing the percent p. So this this two dollar sign is how you specify which argument on the stack you want to leak, and percent p just means pointer. So we can see that technically I should be skipping zero, but we can see the first argument is an address to here, the second one is zero null, and then third is an address here, fourth is here. You can see this is a seven fff address and this is a seven fa address, and so um, if you play around with this enough, you know, this is a stack address and this is a libc, or this is just, it might not be libc, but it's a library leak. And so we already have what we need. So we can see five is a stack address and three is a libc. And you can also in GDB, or sorry, in Podebug, you can use VM map and see where everything is located. So we can see our challenge binary is here uh, at 55F. Then we have the heap uh, right after that. And libc is located here. So 7FA, uh, 7FA. So we have a leak to libc. And we needed a leak to the stack, which is 7FFF9. And we have a 7FFF9. So cool. So really, we just need to grab this one and this one, or this one and this one, either way. Once we do that, uh, let's go back and change this back. Uh, what am I doing? This one, we don't need these anymore. Um, like I said, we're going to grab the first one and the fifth one. And so we're going to take those values, we're going to grab them from the response. So I, this is just some split logic. I specifically send libc is equal to percent one, and then stack is equal to percent five, just so that I can receive and split them out. I take those addresses, and then I look at the a offset uh, that is in the current execution and where the known offset is. So like if I was running this right now, uh, so I'm setting libc, I have the leak. And what I'll do is I'll look at the known offset. So it's this one, and I'll see that it is uh, libc here. So I'll copy both of those values. I'll place them here. And so I know where the offset is for all future leaks. Because these will be at random addresses, but the offset between the base of libc and whatever this is on the stack will always be the same. So this is always the same value. And so from there, we're just calculating the offset from our leak to the base of libc. Um, Hopefully that made sense. And then the same for this one. Um, I wanted a stack leak so that we can overwrite the, var the, the value of RIP uh, that's on the stack. So uh, there's some stack frame. Um, one of these uh, is what we want. I think probably this one here. And so we want this address so that we can overwrite it. And this address is on the stack. Um, and we want to overwrite it, or it's stored on the stack, but it points to uh, somewhere in the, the binary, sorry, into libc. Um, and we want to overwrite this value so that it jumps somewhere else. Cool. So like I said, uh, so we leaked our two values. So we now have a value for libc, and we know where the return address is on the stack. Uh, we'll print those out, and then we'll do a, another printf exploit. Uh, Pwn Tools is amazing for printf. Um, I don't know what I was doing before Pwn Tools existed when I had to do printf exploits. Um, they are the worst, uh, <laughs> in my personal opinion. Um, I just, I'm not good at them. 
So what I first for doing these, uh, like I said, Pwn Tools has a beautiful function called format string payload. First, you need to figure out the offset within a printf. If you're not familiar with printf bugs, I'd highly recommend uh, looking at some YouTube videos or something uh, that really goes into to depth that explains them. But we need to calculate this offset too. So the first thing I do is I print out something that looks like this, AAA, and then percent %x, percent %x, percent %x, percent %x. This will tell me which offset is percent %x because uh, format string is going to set a value here, and then we're going to use that to overwrite it. And so I can see uh, one, two, three, four, or five, six, here's all the 41s. So I know it's the six offset is uh, the AAAs. Like I said, print tests can be a little bit confusing. Highly recommend watching. There's a bunch of animated videos that show how this stuff works, uh, which will probably give you a way better feel for them. Uh, but just know using printfs, we can do a write what where gadget. Um, and so using, again, that, that format string, uh, we specify what our writes are going to be. And so I'm going to say at the return address, write this. At the return address plus eight, write this, and at the return address plus 16, write this. Cool, and so the different things we're writing is we're using one gadget. So if you're not familiar with one gadget, uh, it's a magical tool, um, one gadget, and we're gonna run this on libc. What this will do is this will find addresses. These addresses, if you were to jump to them, will call exec CVE with bin shell. So just by jumping to this address, uh, there's a series of fortunate things that happen such that this will be called. Um, absolutely amazing. And so any three of these will work given these constraints. So either the address that R12 and the, the address that R12 is pointing to has to be null, or R12 has to be null, and the address that R13 pointing has is pointing to has to be null, or the value of R13 is null itself. Um, so if any of these, if, if you can match one of these conditions, you can use one of these registers. Um, for this specific problem, it didn't work out that way. Um, we had to do something else. So I'm using printf to write a little ROP uh, payload, I guess, uh, ROP chain. Um, so I'm gonna do a pop RDI, and then it's gonna, the next one is a zero. So it's gonna put zero into RDI, and then it's gonna call our one gadget. Cool. Um, and so this is just the output uh, that you see here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, from there, um, we will uh, do the printf vulnerability. It'll write these values onto the stack, and then once we return from the function, uh, it'll pop RDI, put zero into RDI, and then call off to one gadget, and we will have shell. So uh, if we run it, uh, Python 3, what's going on? Uh, Python 3, solve. Hopefully I didn't clobber everything too much. Uh, continue, and we can see a, a new program is ex uh, x, uh, sorry. Process 60 is executing a new program. There's our shell, and we should just be able to do ls, and we can see we have shell, so everything worked out. Uh, let's cancel out of here, and we can run it remotely just to make sure everything's aligned correctly. So now we're gonna do the remote port. Oh, and when we run it remotely, we obviously can't use GDB, so let's comment that out. Python 3 solve. Uh, it sent a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, this, the output is so large, this is just how the printf works. Um, uh, actually, ls, you can see you do ls and there's flag.txt, so you do cat flag.txt. Um, but the, the output is so large and weird because the way these printf bugs work is they use this operator called percent %n. And so this will write the number of values to a, the number of bytes written to a value on the stack. Um, and so you have to, and it, you, there's a couple of these different percent %n's. I think you can do like this, which will write like a couple of bytes or one byte at a time, something like that. Um, and so it'll write out a whole bunch of bytes so that we can uh, do all these individual writes bytes at a time. Um, again, they're super frustrating to actually construct by hand. I'm very thankful that Pwn Tools does it for us, but it, it's good to do it at least once. Uh, but anyways, that's why you get all that weird output. Anyways, hope you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next challenge. Cheers.